Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the South Florida Tribune podcast. My name is Scott Morgan Roth. Glad to have Gary Cornblue with us. And Gary, first of all, welcome back to the broadcast. Hey, thank you, Scott. So I'm going to start off the way I always do by thanking senior medical associates, leaders in senior care, those are people 65 and older. You can reach them at 954-659-9690 or seniormedicalassociates.net. Great group of doctors. You take great care of my folks. And uh, once again, thanks for having me on and thank you to the viewers and listeners. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in. Obviously, this company that you represent is very big in Broward County, Florida. For those individuals who want to know where Broward County, Florida is in Southern Florida area near the Fort Lauderdale area. So Gary, first of all, what do you want to accomplish uh, with this particular show? Well, this broadcast is going to be about uh, special enrollment uh, periods as well as many, many plans. So I just want people, the takeaway should be, what are you allowed, what can you do during a special enrollment? Um, so how are you allowed to change plans and uh, how that works and many, many plans. Um, you know, I want people to understand, especially the folks that may qualify for these plans. I want them to understand that there are really good benefits out there for them, for those lower income, for those lower income folks. Um, they can qualify for at the very least a low income subsidy from the state of Florida, which could help them pay their Medicare Part B premium give them a nice, nice drug subsidy, um, as well as possibly getting them partial Medicaid or even full Medicaid. So I want people to understand what they can do during this time frame, and especially for the, uh, the uh, dual eligible people, the Medi Medi uh, folks, there's a lot of great benefits out there for you. Now, what I encourage a lot of folks to do when they watch or listen to our shows, have a pen and paper handy, because I know you'll be able to take a lot of notes just so you want to know where to find this show. You can find it on Spotify, Google, iHeartRadio, Apple. You can view it on our YouTube channel or go to www.southfordertribune.com to find it or wherever you get your podcast. So there's a lot of different ways to access this particular show as we do all of our other ones here on the network as well. So let's get going here. Gary, what is a SEP? A SEP, okay, SEP is an acronym and it stands for Special Election Period. Um, there, there are a lot of SEPs, a lot of them. I'm only going to touch on them, the most common ones. So one of the most common special election periods is, uh, if, if you move, let's say you move, you move from, you know, Florida to New Jersey. Well, you're going to need to change for, for, if you have Medicare Advantage, you're going to need to change that plan to a New Jersey plan. Okay. Um, so that's one special election period that many, many people have to take advantage of um, because the plans, again, you, mu you have to do it because most of the Medicare Advantage plans are regional plans. So you definitely want to make sure that you have a plan that's offered there in the state in which you live. Um, uh, uh, so that's one thing. And then le another very common special election is Let's say you're work, you've been working for a company and you're enjoying their group benefits for many years. Now you're eligible for Medicare. So you want to leave the group plan and let's say you qualify for Medicare, you're 65 or older. Um, that's another very common special election period. People leaving their group plan and then qualifying for Medicare. Because once you turn 65, you're going to get your Medicare card anyway, showing your Part A. Okay, and you can, you can delay your a Part B enrollment as long as you have that group coverage and you're working at that company and you're enjoying that group coverage, you can delay your, your enrollment in your Part B as long as you want. But once you decide to leave that group plan or retire, whichever comes first, um, you'll definitely wanna make sure that you, the, your company extends coverage to you right to the end of when you're going to qualify for or enroll in Part B. So let's just say your Part B starts January 1. You definitely want to make sure your company covers you up until the end of the year. Um, and it's very easy to, to, to enroll in Part B. You just call the Social Security Administration, which we all kind of know that number uh, uh, by heart is 1-800-772-1213. So it's that easy. You have seven, a seven month window in which to do that um, when you turn 65, okay? You have that seven month window. But when you're coming off a group plan and you can enroll anytime, because remember you have that special election period. 
Okay. Okay. All right. So, Gary, if I qualify for a SEP, what would be my start date? So, if you qualify for a SEP, and again, I mentioned the Medi Medi plans. That's another. Um, that's another way you would qualify for a special enrollment because Medi uh, people that have are dual eligible. They have Medicaid and Medicare. They can actually switch their plans every quarter. So, if you so, for example, we'll go back to let's say you're leaving your group plan. You you you're on a group. Uh, coverage, and you're leaving that plan. So your start your 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 start date would be what, whenever you want, whenever you enroll in that Part B. So let's take that last scenario. That person's covered Part B starts January one of 2022. Well, that's when your start date would be. If your if your Part B starts on January first, then you'll your agent will make sure that your Medicare Advantage or your supplement, whatever you choose, starts on the same exact day on the start date of your Part B coverage. Um, so if you're moving and you've got a special election, when is your start date going to be? It's when, um, it's when you actually move, let's say you get to your new, your new location, your new state, you just simply call your plan and let them know you've moved. Um, they'll release you and then your, new, your agent or your new agent will be able to uh, enroll you in a plan in, in which you live. And of course, it'll start on the first day of the following month. Um, for Again, for Medi, Medi plans, they have four enrollment period. They can, they can actually um, enroll and disenroll once each quarter. So they have four opportunities a year, uh, the people that qualify for Medicaid and Medicare, whereas most people only can utilize the annual election period. Uh, but it, well, I just just to answer your question, the set start date uh, is always going to be the start date of your Medicare Part B. Now, if I'm understanding you correctly, did you say there's a little bit of geography involved about where you live? There, there is, Scott, because um, like let's say you know, we live here in Florida. So let's say we have an HMO here in Florida. Remember, I mean, many plans are regional. You know, we're here in Broward County, which is near Fort Lauderdale, right? So that's a regional plan. I, I, uh, if I move to New Jersey or New York or California, I can't take that plan with me. So I'm going to need to contact a, a local agent in my new state uh, and have that person enroll me in a new, uh, in a new plan specific state, one that's specific to that regional area in terms of doctors, specialists, and hospitals. Um, they may, you may even be, some states even offer, if you want to go with a supplement, some states even offer you a guaranteed issue when you move into their state, which is kind of interesting. Um, so it, not all states do that. It's, it, it, that, go, that runs state by state. So you'll want to check with the, the agent uh, in that state. Well, what's interesting about that is the fact that, you know, let's not kid ourselves. We have a national audience as well as a local audience. I want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to benefit by this show, regardless of where they live. So glad we were able to address that point. So with that said, can I leave my employer plan and take Medicare? Yes, you can. Um, as long as you're eligible, you can't just leave your employer plan to take uh, Medicare if you're under 65 or you don't qualify for Medicare. Naturally, you have to qualify for Medicare. So let's say you do, let's say you're 65 and now you've got your part A, and now you've decided just to leave your group plan and, and, and enroll in a part B and a, and a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medicare supplement plan. You absolutely can leave your employer. Um, it, and, and many of my clients do. And many, in many occasions, and each, each situation is different, but I would say in most of the time, I would say, um, you're better off going into a Medicare plan than staying with your group plan because many times they have very high deductibles. And uh, the Medicare Advantages uh, plans typically have lower uh, maximum out-of-pocket costs uh, than, than many of these group plans. Um, so, but the short answer is yes, you can, if you're eligible, and let's say you're on disability, let's say you're disabled and you have Medicare through disability, which is also a possibility. So you, you could opt out of your group plan and take, take, uh, take Medicare as well. Um, so I hope I answered your questions. You're fine. Okay, so what is the right to try option all about? Right to try. Okay, that's a great, uh, 
That's a great option to have actually. And a lot of people don't realize this, but let's say you initially enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan when you turn 65. And I had this, I did this, I took care of a client just within the past few weeks that had this, that took advantage of their right to try option. If, if, you, if, you're, if you're just eligible for Medicare, whether you have Medicare uh, through, whether, whether you're eligible for Medicare through disability or whether you've turned 65 and you're eligible for Medicare, you actually have a 12 month trial uh, period, they call it, or a right to try. Um, as, so if, if, and here's the way it works. If you decide, let's say in the eighth or ninth or 10th or 11th month, uh, that you want to return back to original Medicare, you actually will be guaranteed a supplement. Um, so it, it's kind of a nice option. Now, if you wait one year and one day, that's it. Um, you may be stuck with that Medicare Advantage plan because remember, medical uh, Medicare supplement plans are medically underwritten. You have to be, you have to prove evidence of insurability. You have to prove that you're medically insurable. Um, so once that guarantee issue period expires or has, um, then you may, you may or may not qualify for that supplement again. Uh, but that right to try option is, 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 again, it's a little known option and it's a really important one. One that I utilized myself just recently for actually for two clients. So it's not that uncommon. It's, 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 it's a great um, rule to, to, to take advantage of. All right, so I've got a loaded question for you. Gary, is there help covering the cost of expensive medications? Yeah, expensive medications, wow. Every, you, know, it, you know, and they seem to be getting more and more expensive. So maybe one of these days, these, the big pharma will uh, cut us a little bit of a break. But, but the answer is yes, there is, there is help. Um, uh, earlier in the broadcast, I mentioned something called a, an LIS or a low income subsidy. And that's a tremendous help with these expensive medications. So your income has to fall within, within a certain level, uh, but you'll want to at least apply. You can get the application uh, from the Department of Children and Families to apply for Medicaid services. And if you get the low income, if you qualify for the low income subsidy, um, not only do you get help paying your Medicare Part B premium, they, they cover that for you, the full one, it's actually 148.50 this year, but they also give you a hefty drug subsidy where the, I think the maximum copayment is like $9.70. So absolutely that, at the very least, that low income subsidy is a tremendous help uh, with expensive medications. Now, if you have, or, now you, you could also qualify for partial Medicaid, and also have the low income subsidy, and you can qualify for full Medicaid and also have the low income subsidy. So those are uh, three scenarios where you could get help with expensive medications. The other ways are, you know, like places like, well, I would always go to the manufacturer first and see if you can get manufacturer coupons or uh, so many times they offer them on their websites. Um, GoodRx seems to be very popular. Um, so there, there, there are other services that you can, can, can try and utilize to, to, to reduce your cost um, as well. Okay, so what is a Medi, Medi plan? A Medi, Medi plan. Sounds kind of redundant, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, and it is, it's Medi, Medi. If it's for people that qualify for Medicaid and Medicare, uh, thus the term Medi, Medi, kind of a generic term. But the real term really is uh, people that have qualified for Medicaid and Medicare, they're said to be dually eligible. So um, dual meaning they have, and, and, they're, and the plans that they qualify for are called a dual special needs plan because they're dual Medicaid and Medicare and they're special needs plans because these folks that have the lower incomes, they tend to have more and special needs in terms of income, in terms of financing and, you know, they tend to not be as healthy. Um, so they kind of, they, they have more uh, 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 special needs. So uh, Medi Medi, again, is just that Medicare recipient that has uh, Medicaid and uh, Medicare. And it, it's, it's a nice combination because what Medicare doesn't, doesn't uh, pick up, 
Medicaid usually picks up the tab. So these, these plans are very, very rich uh, in benefits, and they typically have zero copays across the board. And again, usually if you have partial or full Medicaid, you usually have the low income subsidy too. So then you get those very, very low copayments on those, on those expensive medications. So that is a Medi Medi plan. Medicaid, Medicare. How do you how do you get Medicaid if you don't already have it? You apply for it. So if you think you may be in that low income category and you haven't applied for Medicaid, you really ought to call your agent um, and someone who is in the know and they can help you uh, complete that application. It's quite lengthy. Um, uh, I've completed many, many of them and, um, and submit it. The worst they could say is no, you don't qualify, but you might be surprised. Maybe you qualify for the low income subsidy at the very least. And that's a tremendous help. Uh, monetarily, both in the in the uh, reimbursement of the uh, or, in, or in the payment, actually they pay your Part B premium, and in the drug subsidy. I call that a first class tongue twister. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. that, so with that said, can I switch from a Medicare plan to a Medi Medi plan to get better benefits? Uh, you 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 can under one condition. What's the condition? Condition is you have to be Medicaid and Medicare. So can you just switch from, a, from any Medicare plan, any Medicare Advantage plan to a dual special needs plan just to get better benefits? No, absolutely not. You cannot do that. But you, let's say you, 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 you qualify for Medicaid, then you definitely can. You can, and you only have, and you have a regular plan that doesn't take advantage of uh, and accommodate for your for, for your Medicaid or your low income subsidy. You can absolutely switch and you absolutely should switch. No question about it, because as I said, you the, the co-payments tend to be lower and you do get, tend to get much, much better benefits uh, when you have a, a, a Medi, Medi Medi plan or a dual uh, special needs plan. But again, to answer your question, no, you can't just switch. But if you qualify, uh, for Medicaid, then absolutely you, you can switch. Now, even if you just qualify for low income subsidy, um, you can switch. That actually also gives you a special enrollment. Remember, even just the low income subsidy alone, let's say you're newly qualified for the low income subsidy for let's say it's October 13th for the November 1st, you could have your agent put a, a a Medi Medi plan into place, or or a or a plan that would accommodate your low income subsidy, because those folks qualify for that special enrollment, and they can again they can um, sign up for this plan as soon as they become eligible for that new we call it extra help. You're getting extra help from the state. Okay, so if I have Medicaid and Medicare, what is my best plan option? So if you have Medicaid and Medicare, what is your best plan option? I, well, I would tend to say a PPO. I would tend to, to, to think would be your best option. I mean, there are many, many plans that are HMOs, but because the co-payments and the, and are, are so low, in most cases, zero across the board, um, I think you're better off taking a PPO as long as your doctor is in those plans. It's, if they're only in the HMO plan, then then that naturally that's your better plan. So it has to do with your doctors in, in that, you know, accepting that, that, that plan. Uh, but for the most part, I would say the PPO is the better option because uh, it allows you to, to access a national network. Um, so I would say that's your best option. Um, you you, you can't purchase a supplement plan when you're when you have when you're on Medicaid and Medicare um, because these are for folks that 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 have that have lower incomes and they need the extra help. Um, so uh, they tend to not go the supplement route. They tend to go and the, the appropriate and suitable uh, policy for them to enroll in again is is a Medi Medi or a, or a dual special needs plan but particularly the PPO, because it does give them a little bit more flexibility, a little more, more freedom than the, uh, than the HMO. 
All right, folks, just so you know, this broadcast is presented by Senior Medical Associates. My name is Scott Morgan, I'm joined by Gary Cornblue tonight. Glad to have you with us. Hope that you're enjoying and getting a lot out of this show. Again, our main objective is here to make sure that we inform you and educate you and take notes because at some point or another, if you don't have to deal with this information now, you may have a family member, friend that may have to deal with it. And at least it'll be a lot smarter when you get done watching and listening to our show. And just to give you an overview, folks, you can find our broadcast on Spotify, Google, iHeartRadio, Apple. You can view it on our YouTube channel or go to www.southfordertribune.com or wherever you get your podcast. So Gary, well, I want you to give a su summary of everything we've talked about so that people can get the Cliff Notes version of what we had, are looking to accomplish tonight. Sure, so, so, so the Reader's Digest version would be, and I guess the takeaway is, we're, we're talking about special enrollment periods and, and, and dual special needs plans, the Medi Medi plans. So the takeaway here is just, again, understand what your rights are during this special election period, what you can do, how you can switch, what plans you can switch from and to. Um, there's a lot of moving parts to these special enrollments. And again, um, you know, you really need a, a, an agent that understands and, and, and can um, help you facilitate if you, if you do have this, uh, if, you do are, if you are eligible for a special enrollment. And then, of course, I want the, the folks that may have, you know, maybe struggling a little bit and they have lower incomes, I want them to understand that if they don't have a, um, if they haven't applied for Medicaid benefits, um, I think they should, or again, at the very least, they should apply for the low income subsidy. And I think they'd be pleasantly surprised um, because even if they just qualify for that LIS, uh, that low income subsidy, it's a tremendous monetary benefit for them. So again, the takeaway is um, special election period, understand your rights and what you can do. Medi Medi plans, understand that there may be a lot of extra help out there for you that you don't even know about. So talk to, talk to your agent, contact an agent, contact me, I'm happy to help. My cell phone is on 24 seven. And yes, I even get calls on Sunday at um, 6 p.m. All right, so why don't you go ahead and give everybody your cell phone number, Gary, and also your contact information as well. Sure, the best way to reach me is my cell, it's area code 561. 305-5949. And um, my website is www.medigapx.com. That's M-E-D-I-G-A-P-X.com. You can click on my testimonials tab and check my reviews. And I have just many, many just wonderful, wonderful customers that, that have said really nice things about me. And I think they're all true. Well, I think the one thing that benefits you by being able to have your own show here, once again, the South Florida Tribune podcast is presented by Senior Medical Associates. It gives a lot of your clients an opportunity to see that you're educating the public by this platform is really what it does. It helps your credibility. And not only that, you have been in the business for a lot of years. So anybody that doesn't do business with you, shame on them because they're missing out on a lot of information and professionalism. I see the way you carry yourself week in and week out. And it's important that people understand that not only do they have an opportunity with this technology going on to, to see the individuals for whom they're dealing with. So, you know, we're, you're really do a really nice job here. I should point out that Gary Cornblue does write for the South Florida Tribune as well. And you can find his profile on our website as well. I should point out if you want to reach us, you can reach us at South Florida Tribune at gmail.com, or you can also find us on Twitter at Tribune South. It's at Tribune South. So there's numerous different ways to get a hold of us and Gary. And again, we appreciate everything that he does. Does a fine job. And more importantly, I, I'm sure that you won't be disappointed with everything that you acquire from him because he's a really tremendous asset to what we're doing here. And our goal here is to help you any way we can. If we can't help you out, hopefully it's a friend, family member, or acquaintance or whatnot. So, you know, again, Gary, nice job again. And we want to make sure that everybody understands that please take a pen and paper and absorb this information to the best of your ability. 
Yeah. Uh, can I mention one other one other thing to the sure. viewers, the listeners? Sure. It's um, you know, since COVID, um, it's it's actually been a lot easier to do business in the Medicare space. So I just want your viewers and listeners to know that it, whether it's me or or their agent, you know, mo most of the business that I do, I would say ninety five percent of the business I do is remotely because all of these carriers have have DocuSign, they have eSign programs. All my client needs to have is a computer and an email address, and I can sign them up uh, anytime. So right over the phone. So it's you know, COVID has kind of sped sped up the whole um, you know e e signature um, uh, part of this of this business, which has really been very refreshing. I'll I'll be quite honest with you. I, have, I don't have quite as many miles on my car. And I'm perfectly fine with that. But I just wanted them to know it's so easy. They could call me and I can literally get them signed up right over the phone. I usually send the full summary of benefits to my client. We go by that, we, we review that line by line. And then once they're comfortable and ready to go, boy, it's just a click of a couple of buttons and that's it. I just, I, I felt that was worthwhile mentioning. Thanks. Scott. Uh I should point out I've been in the media for 42 years and COVID-19 has certainly turned things upside down in terms of, I used to have a lot of people in my studios before now we do things through teleconferencing. But from time to time, folks, we have to acclimate to what we have in front of us. And I'm just thankful that we can do uh, an effective broadcast the manner, in the manner that we've done. So you know what, Gary, like anybody else out there, if we don't adjust at the times, they're gonna pass us by. And I'm very fortunate that it, technology has enabled us to go that way. So any closing thoughts before we call it a night? Um, no, not at all. Again, I just want to thank the, the viewers and the listeners for staying engaged. And uh, one last time to thank Senior Medical uh, Associates uh, for their sponsorship. All right. And well, thank well, you, Scott. You're a great moderator. Well, <laughs> I'm only as good as what I have to work with. You do a good job, and I want to make sure that everything that we do is in the best interest of our audience. And I, I am a perfectionist and I want things to go the way they're supposed to. Because anybody that's gonna take the time to listen or watch us, we wanna make sure that it's worth every last second that they have. So meanwhile, on behalf of Gary Cornblue, my name is Scott Morganroth. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the South Florida Tribune podcast. And we will look forward to seeing you the next time. Good night, everybody. And please be safe out there. This virus isn't going away. We want to make sure that everybody does what they can to be as safe as possible. Good night, and thanks again for joining us. Good night, everyone.